Have you ever looked at the behavior of gravitational fields and compared it with that of electric fields? If you have, then you would have noticed that they are similar in all respects, except for the fact that we have not confirmed yet that positive and negative masses can exist. In this video, I am going to briefly point out some of these similarities and use them to guide me in the development of the magnetic theory of gravity. I shall make a hypothesis and then provide an experiment to test that hypothesis and then hope that someone, an experimentalist, will actually do the experiment to verify if the hypothesis is true or not. This hypothesis will also form the basis for the theory of gravitational waves described by Maxwell's gravitational equations which I have developed. Let's start by reminding ourselves that gravitational fields are produced by masses while electric fields are produced by charges. So, in all the equations that describe these phenomena, mass will be replaced by charge and the gravitational constant will be replaced by the Coulomb's constant when we move from describing gravity to electrostatics. Consider a large sphere of mass capital M and charge capital Q in a small test mass of mass little m and charge little q. The gravitational and the electric forces in these bodies are as follows. As you know, the gravitational force equation can be written as the test mass times the gravitational field of the bigger mass. Also, the electrostatic force equation can be written as the test charge times the electric field strength of the bigger charge. The gravitational and electric field equations are as follows. With capital G taking the place of K and M taking the place of Q. We see that little g and capital E are equivalent. Let me demonstrate this even further. Consider an inclined surface on the surface of the Earth. It could be a steep hill or anything. Positions A and B are at different distances from the center of mass of the Earth. So, these two positions are at different gravitational potentials. Just in case you don't know, gravitational potential is defined in physics as the gravitational constant times the mass of the body considered, divided by the distance of the position at which you wish to measure the potential. Let positions A and B be at distances R1 and R2 from the center of the Earth, respectively. So, their respective potentials are as follows. If you place a ball at position B, which is a higher potential, it will roll down towards point A, which conventionally is at a lower potential, and the movement of mass constitute what is known as a mass current, I subscript M. If points A and B were at the same level, that is, the same potential, there will be no mass flow. Also, if the potential difference between the two points was higher, the mass will move faster, which means a larger current. In mathematical terms, we say that the potential difference and the current are in direct proportion. Removing the proportionality sign yields delta V equal to beta plus I, and this is Ohm's law, which in electricity is written as I times R. Delta V is the potential of B minus the potential of A. If you integrate the gravitational field from A to B, that is, from, from R1 to R2, you get the same expression as delta V. So, delta V is equal to the integral from R1 to R2 of G dot dl. In electrostatics, this equation is as follows. This again shows you that G and E are equivalent. Also, G is equal to minus the derivative of the gravitational potential with respect to distance, just like E is equal to minus the derivative of the electric potential with respect to distance. 
In my other video titled Gravity and Magnetism, I derived Gauss's law as follows, which once again is identical to this. With that said and done, I think it is very reasonable to assume that gravitational and electric fields behave identically in all respects, even the ones that we have not yet confirmed. And it is on this basis that I make my hypothesis. And it is as follows. There is a magnetic field associated with gravitational fields which behave in the same way as the magnetic field associated with electric fields. Let this field be represented by a little b. Then the Maxwell's equations for gravity are as follows. We derived the first two equations in the last two videos under this playlist. I will put the links in the video description below. The last two equations are the Faraday and Ampere's laws respectively, which simply inform that a change in gravitational field will produce a corresponding magnetic field, and a change in magnetic field will produce a gravitational field. Epsilon bar and mu bar are the gravitational permittivity and permeability respectively, and J is the mass current density. Now, I am going to design an experiment to test the hypothesis that magnetic fields due to gravity exist. For this experiment, we will need what I call a gravitational solenoid, which is a series of small wheels with heavy masses attached to their surfaces in a regular pattern. You can cause this solenoid to spin by connecting it to an electric motor. This will behave like masses moving in a circular path, which is identical to a circularly flowing current, and this will produce a magnetic field with north and south poles. If the solenoid is spinning in the opposite direction, then the polarity of the poles will be reversed, since the current direction has also been reversed. So, if you place two gravitational solenoids with opposite currents side by side, you will have parallel field lines moving from one solenoid to the next, exactly like all the electric experiments you are familiar with. If these solenoids are identical, then a test mass placed in the middle will experience no net gravitational force. And if all these are in a vacuum, then any effect on the mass must be as a result of something else, which must be the magnetic force. Now, Let's set up the experiment. In a vacuum, we arrange the solenoids like so, to have parallel magnetic fields through this entire length. On this side, we place some kind of gun to fire a mass through the center of the setup at speed v. Such, such that the mass maintains this speed to the other end, where we place a screen to detect the emergent position. If the gun is fired when the solenoids are switched off, the mass will strike the screen exactly at the center. If my hypothesis is correct and gravitomagnetism is true, there will be a vertical deviation from the center, just like a charged body moving through a magnetic field will be deviated. Let me predict by how much. The displacement S is given by the following equation. But this ball was fired horizontally, so its initial vertical velocity is zero. So the equation reduces to this. This ball will be displaced as long as it is in the field, and the time it will spend inside the field is given by the length of the path divided by the horizontal speed of the ball. The magnetic force acting on a moving charge in a magnetic field is given as follows. So, for the gravitomagnetic force, we simply replace charge with mass to have this. And this is equal to the mass of the ball times its vertical acceleration since the force is acting vertically. So, acceleration is equal to V times V. Putting all this in the displacement equation here's S equal to B d squared over 2V. That is how much the ball will be deviated from the center. 
I urge any experimental physicist out there to go out and test this theory. If this comes out true, then you see that we can use those Maxwell's equations to describe gravitational waves, which will provide astrophysicists with a new way of studying the universe. It is already clear that gravitational waves travel at the speed of light, and that is what those Maxwell's equations will predict. That is a topic for another video, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching and see you next time on the Classical Universe.